So, you've chosen to go with hexagonal tiles, just to realize that all of the spacing tools and tutorials are aimed at square tiles. Well, hopefully this little video can give you some tips and tricks that might actually work for you. Just a quick note before we get started, I'm in no way, shape or form a professional when it comes to tiling. I just like to figure out my own solutions to problems. So see this more as a tip video than a how-to. Okay, let's get started. If you haven't realized it yet, hex tiles require a bit more planning than square ones. With square tiles, you just have to make sure you don't end a row with a sliver of a tile, maybe shift half a tile, but that's about it. When you lay out hex tiles, you quickly see that there's a lot of voids to fill to square up the edges. And those voids mean cutting tiles. And this example is with an open top and right side, with restrictions on the top, you can be pretty sure that the tiles won't match perfectly, so here you have to cut each and every one. And if we put restrictions on the right side as well, then we get even more cutting. More on that later. Let's talk about spacers. I'm not a fan of these tiny wedges, too fiddly, and the gap they make was too small. So I used flooring wedges instead, much heftier and could easily be used to move the tiles around. Because as you see, hex tiles got a match on all six sides, so if you shift one slightly, then you send a ripple through all of them. I know that you can use traditional tiling crosses standing up, but it's not something I've tried. Maybe it's great, but in the store they felt as fiddly as a small wedges. And I like to do stuff after my own head. Orientation is something you have to decide on early on. Do you place the tile with the flat side down or through the side? This decision has both an aesthetic and a practical side, which one looks nicest and which will give you most tiles to cut. When I have physical boundaries to consider, I'd like to make a cardboard template matching the space and then I can place my tiles on it to see what needs to be cut. When I'm satisfied, I just flip the script and mark out on the tiles that need to be cut beforehand. This works both for existing borders as well as holes. Let's talk about cutting. I know that the correct way to do this is use a tile cutter saw thingy, but those are quite expensive, even to rent, and I felt confident enough to use the angle grinder with a stone cutting disc, and it works surprisingly well. I would say the trick is to use some masking tape to stop chipping out, and just doing multiple passes from both sides. And then when you find it through, you just have to clean up the edge carefully. And here we have my shitty craftsmanship in frame-lapse glory. While I have your ear, I would like you to subscribe to the Forge Home channel. If you like home improvement, but with a bit more style than this, then Forge Home is the place for you. As you can see, there's a lot of fiddling and moving wedges around, and that's because I'm cheap not only when it comes to not renting a tile cutting saw, but I only have like 40 of these wedges, so when I run out, I have to stop for the day. And when the tile set set, I found that a toothbrush was really useful in cleaning up the edges. On one wall, we went with a non linear pattern, and when grouting that, is it called grouting? Well, you know what I mean. Masking tape was really good to get nice clean edges. And I know you're supposed to go diagonally when grouting tiles, but hexagonal tiles doesn't really play that game. Now we're back at the edges, and here you just really have to get your hands dirty. So I suggest wearing gloves. And when you're done, you just have to peel the masking tape to get that nice clean edge. And after that, just a wet finger to rub out the... Uh, hmm... To smooth out any dimples. And then you're good to go. Now we're at the final stretch, the caulking. And here the masking tape trick really comes in handy. And when we're talking about top tips for caulking, some water and some dishwash soap to dip your finger in really makes smoothing out the caulk a dream. And then you just peel the masking tape to get rid of all the excess and some final fingering to smooth it all out. And just like that, we're finished. Well, I'm finished. I bet you haven't even started. So good luck with that. Oh, and I almost forgot. 
Here you can see I put some trim to cover up the hole between the tiles and the cupboards. I think it looks pretty okay. If you have any tips or tricks of your own, or any feedback on the ones I've provided, feel free to put them down in the comments. I mean, I won't have any use for them, I'm not doing this again for a long time. But maybe someone else watching can find it useful. Thank you very much for watching, and have a nice day!